Hey geometry students, in this lesson we're going to be taking a look at investigation one in Saxon geometry. And that means we're going to be looking at transversals. Now here I'm starting off with a picture of what a transversal looks like. A transversal occurs in geometry when we have two lines. They don't necessarily have to be parallel lines, although oftentimes they are. We'll talk about that in this lesson. Uh, but we have two lines that are intersected by a third line that crosses both of them. The line that crosses both of them is known as the transversal. And we just have these two original lines being crossed by that transversal. And there are some relationships among these lines that we should talk about. Now, I want you to contrast this picture of a transversal across two lines with some other pictures that I'm going to show you. Notice in this picture... I have two parallel lines, or at least seemingly parallel lines, uh, and a transversal that crosses them. I just want to point out that when a transversal crosses two lines, it makes a set of eight different angles. One, two, three, four around the first intersection, five, six, seven, eight. So another four around the second intersection for a total of eight angles. And as we compare those angles, we notice that there's some angles that relate to one another. Okay, now I just want to note one other thing. Notice that this picture of a transversal crossing two lines, the transversal is more horizontal across the two lines. This picture, the transversal is more vertical across the two lines. So in order to relate this picture to this picture, you have to imagine this kind of flipped on its side a little bit. Uh, but that, that happens. Transversals can cross at any angles, and the original lines can be going at any angle. Uh, so you do have to really think through what's going on when we have uh, transversals, crossing lines. It's not going to be just one kind of picture. There's multiple things that can happen. All right, so uh, one pair of angles. We're going to be talking about pairs of angles that you need to be able to identify when looking at transversals. Remember, there's eight angles, but in, within those eight angles, we can identify angles that relate to one another and we usually relate them to each other in groups of two or pairs. A corresponding pair of angles, okay, this is a pair of corresponding angles, one and two. Any pair of angles that lie on the same side of the transversal, so here's my transversal. Notice that one and two are both above the transversal. And on the same sides of the other two lines. So this angle one is to the left of this line, angle two is to the left of its line, uh, these would be corresponding angles. The key here is uh, the easy way to find these is to look on the same side of the transversal. And then they're angles that probably look like they're pretty close to the same. Like you can see how these are related to each other. But in order to describe it, you really have to go back to this technical definition. Same side of the transversal and on the same sides of the other two lines. Okay, there's where corresponding angles would be. In this diagram, I would have corresponding angles right here where my cursor is, and right here. So the bottom of the two lines and to the left of the transversal. These would also be corresponding angles here and here because they're to the, on the bottom of the lines but to the right of the transversal. What about on the top of the two lines and to the left of the transversal here? And here would be a set of corresponding angles. And then here and here would be a set of corresponding angles. Uh, so corresponding angles, actually, there are four different pairs of corresponding angles with every transversal. The next type of angle is known as the alternate interior angles. So let's read this definition. A pair of non-adjacent angles. Remember, non-adjacent means that they can't be right next to each other. Um, they can't share a side uh, of their angle. Non-adjacent angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal and between the other two lines. Okay, so here, here's my transversal. Notice one and two are on opposite sides of the transversal. And they're between the two lines that cross the transversal. Over here, if I was looking for alternate interior, this would be one angle that's between the two lines. It's on the left side of the transversal. There must be another angle on the right side of the transversal that's between the two lines, and that would be down here, okay? I couldn't use this one up here because if it was this one, these would be adjacent angles. So they have to be non-adjacent angles. So it would be 
the angle up here and the angle down here. Also, the angle up here could be one alternate interior. It's between the two lines and on one side of the transversal. But the other one would be the angle down here. Those are alternate interior angles. Next, we're going to look at alternate exterior angles. Same concept, except now we're on the outside of the other two lines. So notice that here, here's the transversal. My alternate exterior angles are going to be on the outside of the, on opposite sides of the transversal, right? And they're on the outside of those two lines. So I can't put them between the two lines. I have to put them outside. So we'd have one here. And then there has to be one on the other side of the transversal outside the two lines down here. These would be alternate exterior. In my drawing up here, I'd have one here and one down here. Also, one up here. This would be uh, part of a pair of alternate exterior. Its partner would be this one way down here. It's on the other side of the transversal outside the um, two lines and it can't be adjacent to the first angle. So that would be this alternate exterior. And then lastly, we have same side interior angles, also called consecutive interior angles. These angles are on the same side of the transversal and between the two lines. So that would be these angles here, one and two. Uh, there's going to be two sets of these, just like there were two sets of alternate exterior and two sets of alternate interior for every uh, transversal situation. I have two sets of same side interior here, here, and here, here. Okay, these are my same side interior, same side interior. The key is that these ones do actually share a side um, but they're on the same side of the transversal. When I say same side, I mean the same side of the transversal. All right, now why are these significant? Well, they're significant because of the relationships that exist between, uh, between these special pairs of angles when we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. And that's what you're going to see as a theme here, is that um, for these Postulates and theorems, we're going to be talking about if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Parallel lines, parallel lines being cut by a transversal. If your lines are not parallel, these postulates and theorems do not hold true. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the corresponding angles are congruent. That means that if I look for angles that are on the same side of the transversal and on the same sides of the other two lines, okay? So um, there would be this angle and this angle. If M and P are parallel, then this angle is congruent to this angle. Now M and P here in my drawing, as long as this sketch is accurate, which it is, isn't always, I mean, I could draw a sketch like this and then just state that M and P are parallel, even though the sketch doesn't make it look like they are. Uh, but if the sketch is accurate, M and P aren't parallel, so I know that these would not be equal angles. Uh, if I go over to these uh, angles in this transversal across parallel lines, one and two look much more like uh, they would be congruent angles. And the same would be this line, this angle under, under the line and this angle here are corresponding angles. Those would be congruent. And remember, there's always uh, four different pairs of uh, corresponding angles that you could, any of those pairs, any of those four pairs would be congruent. So this one and this one. This one and this one would also be included in that list. All right, same with alternate interior angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, parallel lines again, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. That would be this one on this side of the transversal, and then the non-adjacent angle that's between the two lines, but on the other side of the transversal. These are congruent. And then there's a second pair of alternate interiors that are congruent, this one, and this one. And again, notice if my lines aren't parallel, alternate interior angles are not congruent. The lines that the transversal crosses have to be parallel. Continuing onward, uh, alternate exterior angles are also congruent as long as the two lines cut by the transversal are parallel. Um, so one and two in this diagram, and then also the uh, angles adjacent to them. So this angle here would be 
congruent to this angle down here because they're alternate exterior angles uh, and the lines are parallel that are being cut by the transversal. Then there's one that's different. Okay, one theorem that points to something a little bit different. The same side interior angles, these two, well, those are not going to form um, congruent angles. You can clearly see one is obtuse and one is acute. And that's always going to be the case as long as you're cutting parallel lines. Um, the, I guess it could be true that they're both right angles if they're not, uh, if you don't have one obtuse and one acute angle, they could both be right. But the key is they have to add up to 180 degrees. So the two same side uh, interior angles, as long as I have two parallel lines uh, crossing a transversal, um, the two angles that are same side interior angles would have to be supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. And the same is true on the other side of this diagram. These two angles would have to be supplementary as well. Um, but that makes sense because uh, this forms an alternate interior angle with number two, and this blank angle down here forms an alternate interior with one. Uh, so this would be an equal measure to one, this would be an equal measure to two, and if one and two have to add up to 180 degrees, then uh, the ones on this side would have to add up to 180 degrees as well, because they actually have the same angle measures as angles one and two. All right, so when you're working problems related to uh, these postulates and we're dealing with transversals, you just constantly need to be on the lookout for a few things. Number one, are you dealing with parallel lines that cross a transversal? If you're dealing with parallel lines that cross a transversal, then any of these postulates and theorems are fair game. If not, you can't use any of the postulates or theorems we learned. And then secondly, just pay attention to which set of angles you're being asked about. Now, if you need to go back to these definitions, fine, but eventually you're gonna get good at just recognizing what the pairs of angles look like in a transversal situation without having to go back to these definitions. Hey, one other thing. When you're dealing with transversals, you're gonna see some pretty complicated diagrams. Sometimes a diagram will include two transversals in the same diagram. So let's say that I took another line here. I'm just gonna take a line and I'm gonna cross it over this line so we have two transversals like that. When you're dealing with these postulates and theorems and these definitions, you're only gonna be considering one transversal at a time. So a good thing to get used to is if you have an extra transversal in a diagram, just put a pencil over it or put your finger over it or somehow block out that extra transversal that you don't need. Uh, because if it's there in the diagram, it's going to be confusing. But if you find a way to block it out so you're just focused on your original transversal and those original eight angles, that's key. Make sure you can see all eight angles in your with your original actual transversal you're looking at. Uh, then you'll be able to solve these problems much more easily.